I'm going to show you how you can secure the domain admins and the enterprise admin security groups in an Active Directory network. What we're going to do is create a group policy to stop any accounts within the domain admins or enterprise admins group logging on to any member servers or member workstations. So the first one we want to do is open up Active Directory users and computers. And then within here, open up our domain admin security group and then come to members and then just check whatever members are within the group. Ideally, you don't want any members in this group other than the standard domain administrator and maybe one emergency break glass account, which isn't used. It's purely for a disaster recovery scenario and isn't used on a daily basis. What you'll want to do is then go through every account which is in here and then identify where it is used and then set up those specific permissions for it so it doesn't have a global admin permissions. So for instance, if there's an account in here which is a service account and it's just used for running a single service, you just want to give it permissions for that service so it doesn't have overall permissions across the network. Once you've cleared down your domain admins group, you want to do the same thing for the enterprise admins and then go through and make sure it is just the domain administrator in here as well as the same break glass account for disaster recovery situations. So there are only the one or two accounts. What you'll probably also need to do is deploy a security group to all of your servers and then deploy a second security group to all of the workstations to enable administration of those workstations and servers. I'll link a guide in the description which shows you how to do that and how you can manage the administrative permissions on member workstations and servers by using security groups and group policy. And I'll also link a guide in the description on how to delegate access to Active Directory so people aren't using the domain and the enterprise admins to manage Active Directory. So once you've sorted those two things out, you'll want to open up Group Policy Management. And then within here, right click the Group Policy Objects and then create a new object. I'll call mine Lockdown Domain Enterprise Admins. And then we'll find that new policy and then we can right click and edit. And then we can navigate to Computer Configuration, Policies, Windows Settings, Security Settings, local policies, and then user rights assignment. And then within here, there are five different policies that we need to enable, which is deny access to this computer from the network, deny logon as a batch job, deny logon as a service, deny logon locally, and then deny logon through remote desktop services. I'll also link in the description, Microsoft's domain admin and enterprise admin hardening, which goes through exactly what all of these do. So if we come into the deny access to this computer from the network, define these policy settings, then press add user or group, and then browse. We can then search for domain admins, and then enterprise admins, and then add both of these to this policy. We'll then want to do the exact same thing for the below four, so I'll just go through and do that now. So there we go, I've gone through and for these five settings, I've enabled the policy and added the enterprise admins and the domain admin security group to it. So we can now close our group policy editor and we've got our created policy. Now you want to be careful where you actually apply this. Don't apply it to the root domain or the domain controllers OU. What you'll want to do is apply this directly to the OUs which house your workstations and your servers. So all of my workstations and servers are stored within my company OU. So I can either apply it to the workstations and the servers OU or to the company OU and let it filter down through there. So I'll apply it to the company. And then because inheritance is enabled, the OU for the servers will also get this. So that's got that policy. And then what we can do is we can right click and enforce it just to make sure if there are any OUs which have inheritance disabled. So for instance, if the workstations had block inheritance enabled, it will still get this policy because it has been enforced. So now we've got our policy, we've created it. And what it does is it blocks logon and any type of authentication for enterprise admins and domain admins. And then we've applied that to our workstations OU and our servers OU, which is member servers, but it is not applied to our domain controllers OU. So now if I come to one of the servers, which this has been applied to, and then as this is a test, I will just force update group policy in a production environment, you would just leave this, let it do it on its own. But for this example, I'll just force it to update so it's faster. And then if I do a quick, who am I? We can see that I'm logged in using the domain administrator account. 
But if I do a quick reboot, and now that that's rebooted, if I try and log in using that exact same account, we should get an error to say that we can't sign in as we don't have the rights or the right has been removed from the remote desktop users group. So that has actually blocked us logging in by us creating that group policy. Now what I would suggest is I applied this straight to these um, OUs and all of my servers and workstations. What you might want to do is just create a temporary OU and just apply it to a couple of servers at a time just to make sure it does work how you think it's going to work and it doesn't cause any unintended consequences. And then you can expand it to the rest of your servers and workstations. So that's how you can use group policy to lock down the enterprise admins and the domain admin security groups to stop them being used to log into member workstations and servers.